everyone, this is Brian from ActiveMelody.com. Well, this week we are going to take a look at a Neil Young, uh, classic Neil Young song, Needle in the Damage Done. And this song is one that I picked because it's uh, there's a lot of great strumming technique that you can learn in this, and you can apply this to other things that you play. And it's just uh, it's such a recognizable thing that you can play on a, an acoustic guitar, electric guitar, whatever you have. Um, and really what I just play, that's it. It just repeats over and over again and he sings over part of it and he kind of breaks away and you know, plays by himself um, when he's playing it live and it's just a, it's just a great song. Alright, so this song starts with a D chord. Now I'm going to show you the left hand first, at least the D chord part, and then I'll get into the strumming pattern with the right hand. So the D chord starts like this. I'm going to assume you know how to make a D chord, but if not, you can study my fingers there. Uh, but what what gives it that signature sound is when you remove your middle finger to play that op open one string or the open E string. That's what uh, Neil Young does every time he's switching chords, at least in this first part of it. So you watch, watch this. I'll, I'll kind of go through the chords and you'll hear this one string ring out. I'm exaggerating a little bit to prove the point, but every time I'm doing that, I'm doing an upstroke on the one string. And that is what, um, when you hear that with that chord progression, you immediately know it's needle and the damage done. So that's what the left hand is doing, at least when we start with the D chord. Now, the way that we're going to count out the, the strumming pattern is we're going to say one and two and three and four and. Every time I say one, or, or a note, one, two, three, or four, that's going to be a down stroke, and the and strokes will be up strokes. So um, the other thing to point out is that when we start with a one, so if we, let's say we do it one, two, three, four, one, two, three, we'll just repeat it, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four. Every time I say one, that's going to be your bass note. So the bass note starts with an open D string, or the open four string. Just like that. So watch this as I count it. One and two and three and four and one and two. And there it goes to a, a C note. One and two and three and four and one and two. So we'll get into those notes, but that's how you're going to remember the bass note. Now the other, there's two other notes that you're going to need to know. At one and two and, so the and that happens right after the two, that's all. That's going to be that open one string. So the two and will always be that open one string. Let me demonstrate. So we have one and two and. See it? One and two and. There's one other note we're going to call out, and that's going to be the three and, or the and of three. So it's one and two and three and. So th those two notes are important. The, the and of the two that I just showed you, that's going to be that open one string. The end of the three is going to be the the two uh, the second string. Now you're going to be courting that, so it's not always going to be, or you're going to be fretting that rather. So it's not always going to be an open string, but you're going to play that one string, and then you're going to play the two string. The one string happens on the end of two. The two string happens on the end of three. If that's not confusing, I don't know what is. But let me demonstrate it, and you'll get what I'm talking about. So we'll do it slowly. So we have. One and two and three and four and so let me try that again. One and two and three and four and so you can start to start to hear it sort of shaping, and and it's really this. Uh, this is a great exercise for strumming because. It forces you to always try and be accurate and hit that, uh, hit those notes. Now, now we're going to switch to another chord, which is the C chord. And the way that I do it is I keep from the D, I keep my ring finger down on the fretboard, and I just put my middle finger down on the third fret fifth string right here to play that C note in the bass. So here's how we would count that. You'd say one and two and three and four. And so you, again, it's that same pattern, the one, the end of the two, and the end of the three. 
One, there's the one, and two, and three, and four, and. Does that make sense? One, and two, and three, and four, and. So thus far we have. Now what happens in between those are just downstrokes. And what's kind of cool about it is you don't have to be super accurate on the other strums. They can be a little bit sloppy because you're you're making the chord. So even if you, you whether you hit you know all all the strings or just a couple of them, it doesn't matter because you're kind of keeping time by doing those downstrokes. Now watch what happens here. So from this chord, the C chord, then we're going to come down. I'm going to keep my ring finger down on the second fret, fifth, or second fret, third fret, second string. But I'm going to take my pointer finger and put it down on the fifth string, second fret. And that's really a, a G chord with a B in the bass, I guess. But it's that same strum pattern, the one and two and three and four. And remember, every time you do an and, it's an upstroke. Now watch this, we're going to slide it down one more fret so that you're playing an A sharp, keeping your ring finger here. So it's really, once you get into that groove from here, it's easy, it's very easy. So alright. Um, so there's the first half of this, and, and that's that same strum pattern through all of all four of those chords. So let me do it again. Here it is slowly. So then you come to the C part of the song, and the timing changes, and it sounds like this. What uh, he's doing for that is he's playing this note, which is the first fret second string, on every single and. So remember, on the first half we had to remember the the and of the two and the and of the three. Now you have to just play this note on every single and. So in one respect, it's a little easier because you're not having to remember where to bring it in. So listen to this. I'll call it out. One and two and. Hear how. It, So it's always being played on the end. So your pointer finger stays down on the first fret, second string throughout all of all of these changes. So that makes that a little bit easier. Now here's what the bass notes are doing. They're going like this. So let's start with that. So it starts with a C chord, which you know a C chord, right? So you take a C chord and we're gonna play the fifth uh, string on the third fret, which is the low C, the C note out of that chord. So, so then, the next thing you're going to play is that and. So that's the one. Then you do the and. And re remember, every time you're doing an and, it's an upstroke. So that's that second str string on the first fret. Now watch this. See that little hammer on? That's a great little technique to use. I use that all the time. Anytime I'm playing a C chord, if I'm playing a rhythm, but all you do is you take the C chord, and you take your middle finger off, and you just hammer it on like that. So now we've got right. And remember, that's happening on the ands. Now watch this. Now I'm going to take my, now I'm playing the G string, or the third string, it's just an open string, and, th and that's a downstroke. There's your and again, so now we have, now after the G string, then I take my middle finger and I put it down on the second fret, third string. So what, what you've got, if you just play the bass notes, it sounds like this. Now notice what happens there. My ring finger stays locked down and my pointer finger stays locked down. The only thing that's moving is my middle finger. 
So that makes that kind of easy if you think of it that way. And now if you put the and uh, notes in between that, it sounds like this. And the way that Neil does it, at least on the unplugged, is he does a little palm muting there to give it a little more of a different feel. That's up to you. Um, he doesn't do that as much on the recording, but on I've noticed when he plays it live, he does it that way. Then I come up and play, or I, this is what Neil does, he goes. Which is a great little chord change there, so. Now watch this. I'm gonna keep everything down. Uh, I'm gonna keep, I'm sorry, my middle finger and my pointer finger down. This point now these two fingers come off the fretboard my ring and my pinky and they're gonna go down on the third and fourth uh, string on the third fret so that I can play if I'm playing strings four three and two it sounds like that so what you have and what he does is he plays he plays those two strings like the four and the three string uh, and it gives it uh, to your ear, you can tell the chord has changed there. And really that's an F uh, major 7th chord. So let me show you the walk down from there. So we're going to play strings 4 and 3. Oh, so here's, here's the fretting then, just so we're clear on that. So I keep my middle finger down even though it's behind this fret uh, and it's not being used because it's going to be used. So it was already down prior to that so it, it makes it easy just to keep the one, my, my pointer finger and my middle finger down. So again, if building up to it. See those two are already down? I keep them down because when I take my pinky off like I did there, it's already in position. Then I take my middle finger off, and then I play the fourth string, or the uh, which would be fretted there on the third fret. So that's what you're trying to do. So see what I'm doing there? It's I'm playing strings four and three. Take the pinky off. Take the middle finger off, and then just play the fourth string. So we have, and in between each of those, you have the upstroke played there. So, okay, so let's back up and play those. It sounds more, I'm probably making it sound more complicated than it is. It's actually pretty easy. So from the C, we have. Just repeat that. Just keep doing those two parts over and over again until you get it. That could be a song on its own. You can see with the right hand, it's just the it's it gets comfortable. It's going to be very awkward in the beginning if you're just kind of learning how to strum, but the more you kind of work with it, the the it'll just kind of start to feel. Uh, you know, easy. Okay, so let's back up. Up to this point, we have. Now he goes into this chord. It's just an E chord. You know how to make an E chord, but the difference is he goes, he hammers on, it's like an E sus chord, uses his pinky and plays on the the uh, second fret, uh, third string. So just make an E chord and then use your pinky there to make that a sus chord. Then when you remove it, you have the full E chord. So you have an E sus, which tells your ear it's going somewhere, right? And then you have the full E. And the way that, and that's all he's doing with the left hand. The right hand goes like this. Um, this this part is a little bit tricky, but so he 
uh, let me just walk through the, uh, he kind of does this walk down, he goes... This is how I learned it. So all I'm doing is walking, so I do that first hammer on, that's the third string, then we're going to play fourth string, fifth string, sixth string, those are all downstrokes. Now watch this, I'm going to take my pinky off and I'm going to hammer on to the one, the first fret third string. So again, that's just the E chord. Now I'm going to take and play those four, those same three strings starting on the fourth string. Four, five, six. So together it's like this. Now in between those he's going like this. So he's he's coming up and playing a uh, on the ands he's playing, you know either the one string or the one and two string but he's just letting for a rhythm that's what he's doing. And now I have seen him play that different ways. That's how he does it on Unplugged, but um, you can see him play it where he just strums it as well. So he'll play. Play it like that. That's really up to you, but um, I just thought that was kind of a cool technique. And then this is right back uh, to the D chord. Um, now, the only other thing I would point out is when he's singing over it, he's not necessarily doing all those different uh, picking techniques. So when he, this is how he would play it when he's singing. I'm not going to sing over it, but uh, this is how he, he strums it. When he... A little easier. Then he goes to the C part, he does it like this. Now, now, right there, he plays an F uh, major seventh, which, so from a C chord, all you're doing, you're keeping your pointer finger down, but you're moving these two fingers up. You're moving your middle and your ring finger up, so that your middle finger is now on the third string, second fret, and your ring finger is on the fourth string, third fret. You're playing as an F major seventh chord. So you have... And then here's that E sus. So, there's the C. There's the E sus, and then the E major. And then you're right back to the D part. So that's really all there is to it. Let me just, I'll for one more time, just so that we have a reference, I'll play through the whole thing slowly, and uh, we'll be done. So here we go.